The Me Too movement at Arizona's Capitol culminated with the House voting to expel State Rep Don Shooter last week. The investigation into sexual harassment complaints began a few months earlier when a fellow lawmaker accused Shooter of aggressive and brazen harassment when she joined the House in 2011. Christopher Conover reports on the changing culture at the legislature. And the clerk will record the action of the House. Mr. Shooter is expelled. And with that, the Arizona House of Representatives made history as the first state house to remove a member of office for sexual harassment since the Me Too movement began late last year. But the work was not finished. Many were left asking, now what? I want the public to understand we don't have protection like the corporate world has protection. There is no HR department here, and that's why we're standing here today. We need to rebuild the public trust in the legislature. It's not unique to the legislature. This is obviously happening in other industries, in Hollywood, in the media, and even corporate America, uh, capitals across the country. But we are elected by the people, and the people want to see their elected representatives held to the highest standards and living to that standard. And so that's going to take some time, but we need to, uh, to ensure that we have policies in place that protect that. The proof will be in the pudding, but it's not just about a policy, it's not just about a training one day, it's not just about, you know, a, signing a document. Um, you have to actually act on it. Mia Parrish is on the faculty of the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University. Before that, she was the president and publisher of the Arizona Republic. And when allegations surfaced against Shooter, she wrote an op-ed in the paper detailing her own run-in with then-Senator Shooter. She says the changes we're witnessing in American and culture in feel this, different this time. I think you have an opportunity right now to really make a difference. These are people's lives and livelihoods and safety and um, their opportunity. And that's for men and for women. In the legislature, leaders are trying to come up with ways to ensure that happens. This week, the House passed new rules that include a requirement for writing a code of conduct, because most of the existing code has to do with financial issues, not how House members act towards the people around them at the Capitol. When you look at a lot of other, you know, corporate America, when they have sort of that HR manual, here's the to-dos and not to-dos, I, I don't see how it hurts to have that. In some ways, I'm disappointed we have to have that because we're adults and we should be expected to operate professionally and with respect to other people. But if we're not doing that, then this makes sense to be the next logical step again on the road to trying to rebuild the public trust. But in the House, there still exists a problem with who to talk to. One of the things I mentioned was, was clearly delineating an HR department within the House. Um, and so that will be a process. Um, we have some HR personnel, but, uh, and I think staff probably has a better idea of that, but when it comes to members, and it, we could just benefit from greater clarity and greater formality uh, in terms of HR. It's tough because unlike the corporate world, you know, where you have the, the person at the top who can fire anyone who's misbehaving, we obviously have to take very drastic measures to, uh, to fire somebody if it's not the voters doing that. Those who have found themselves personally involved in spurring cultural changes have advice for lawmakers and everyone else. Standing up and speaking out is as much a part of it and being a good partner and a good friend and a good defender and you know not worrying about what other people are going to say to you you know do the right thing you know it's it's always the right time to do the right thing